Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Greenman and Milner Show here on Newcastle Fans TV. Alongside myself, Jonathan Greenman, and my co-host, Sam Milner, we are joined by former Newcastle and current Rotherham United player, Dan Barley. So, Dan, welcome to the Greenman and Milner Show on Newcastle Fans TV. Great to be here, guys. Um, Dan, how are things at the minute? Uh, you're just talking a bit off air that you're in a green list, now you're in an amber list, and you currently can't enjoy the sun in Whitney Bay. Yeah, like I said before, um, two days in my Portugal holiday, yeah. the amber list comes along, and uh, <laughs> I have to self isolate for five days and pay to get out of it. So um, it's a bit of a tough one to take, but I'll, I'll just get through it and then be back on the golf course soon. Exactly. We'll not talk about too much about golf, though, will we, Sam? <laughs> well, uh, uh, we we definitely will. Um, <laughs> look, look, looking from your Instagram, you were certainly in uh, enjoying the courses around Portugal, but now no golf for five days. Um, I mean, like many footballers, is it a lot of time on the golf course when uh, it's off season? Yes, definitely. Obviously, with the strict regime this season, well, last season with the fixtures and stuff, it was hard to get golfing because it was game Saturday, Tuesday. So you didn't really have much time, especially when you've got nigh on two months off, you need to just cram it all in. So I try and play as much as I can really. And I, I went out for a week there and I played four times. Did your bad. girlfriend mind or did she not have a choice in the matter? The, the first day she did, I had to get a spa day to go on the first day. Yes, that my missus, whatever I got her a spa day instead of oh, thank you. It's now, what do you want? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do I need I think... to give you to go and play golf? Exactly, <laughs> but it's it's worth it. Every if you just have one good shot after the first couple of holes, oh it's, yeah, hundred percent worth it. <laughs> but Dan, I was, oh, 100%, 100%. Um, but Dan, obviously, you've been at Newcastle for a considerable long time. And when you first came in, obviously, you were quite young. But what was that moment like that you actually, you were a Newcastle player, even though it was so young? We were very good, obviously. Support Newcastle growing up. Um, my mum side of the family because my dad's Turkish. My dad said he supported Newcastle, but. He kind of didn't, but my mum said his family were only Castle fans, so it was brilliant getting scouted at the age of nine. But before that, obviously, I was at Darlington and uh, my junior team, but um, yeah, I was delighted. Obviously, my family were as well. You say your dad's Turkey, so you could have been playing for them uh, last night as we record against Italy. They were horrendous in midfield. You'd have slotted in nicely. <laughs> Don't be saying this now, as this comes out, and everyone will be thinking, oh, Want to go to the Turkish national team now, but <laughs> um, looking at it, yeah, it'd, it'd probably be, it's probably a goal of mine because obviously, if you look at the England squad, it's nigh impossible if you're not playing Premier League or Champions League football, you're not going to get the England squad. But Turkey, um, you've got quite a mixture because there's a lad from Brentford who was there, um, and they've just got quite a few players from different leagues. So, I think if you have a good season, um, there could be a chance and it. it would it'd be a, a thing I would look for in the future, maybe. You never know. We might see you play against England. Who knows? Yeah, you never know. You never know what happens <laughs> in football. Exactly, exactly. Um, when, How young do you think you were, Dan, when you kind of realised, actually, do you know what? I can, I can actually make a, a living out of this because you hear some players, some players believe in themselves early on, some players don't really believe in themselves and need like coaches to tell them. How, what did you think? Um... I think it's when I got me offered my first scholarship. I think up and up until, I think it's about fifteen, when you kind of think, oh, well, I've got a chance now because I'm getting offered a scholarship, and then you you get the hard work from there. But up until then, it's just enjoying yourself and finding what position you want to play and stuff like that. Um, but I would say probably from the age of fifteen, you think, yeah, I've got I've got a chance here now. Do you, what are your memories of when you first came to to the training ground at Newcastle on your on your first day all them years ago, and who who was there like in your age group that you were playing alongside? Um, it's funny when you say that because I've me me mum sent us a photo the other day. She's got you know like the pictures from when you're under twelves and stuff, and there's loads of people there. I think there's only three were out of the, about twenty two people still playing professional football. So it's mad when you look at how many players you've grew up in that age group, and there's only a couple playing 
at a decent standard at football. But um, who was my age group? Uh, Arm, Arm, Adam Armstrong, obviously he's tearing it up. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Carl Roberts, he was in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's doing well at Notts County, but I, I still believe he's he's better than that. I think he can play it higher up the leagues. Um, Kyle Cameron, it's okay. If you, yeah, I don't know if you yeah. remember him. Um, Brendan Pearson, you won't know. I don't know if you'll know him. He's the old goalkeeper, tall lad. Remember, if you remember him or not, he was, he was injured for quite a bit, but I don't know if you've ever seen him. But and probably the rest shows. you don't know because they got released. They got released early doors. Mm-hmm. It just shows that it, what dedication it takes, Sam, um, just to actually, like Ozzy, um, Dan's mentioned, like three or four players have actually, you know, made a living out of this. It's it's tough, rigorous um, competition, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you look at... Go on, Dan. No, no, go on. I'm going to interrupt you. Sorry, he was asking you a question. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 it's just like you, you see the, the like the like the release lists every season, don't you? I mean, they come out last week and it's just, lists a mile long and then these guys have got to struggle round for a, a, another club and there's some blooming good players that Newcastle in particular have let go we all know the sorts I mean like when when you were playing with the likes of Adam Armstrong Dan did you did you think that you pair were gonna end, go all the way and end up in the first team at Newcastle um I'd say with the form arm I was in at that time I would say arm I definitely um with me, I was I was playing so many different positions. Like I remember when I first started playing reserves, I was playing right back. And I, I, lo- I, I loved it so much, just bombing on and crossing the ball. And then I got put in a centre midfield, and I think that's when I kind of found my feet there because I like to pick a pass out. So I think it's when I got put in a centre midfield and played that year for the twenty threes. I think I, if I keep working hard, I might get my chance. But um, yeah. You've just got you, you. It's sometimes a bit of luck as well. Sometimes involved, but you've got to just be in the right place at the right time as well. But yeah, oh man, I knew Arma was going to be good. And you could tell when he was younger, he was going to be good. I always remember. Him, I always remember him playing in the in the derby. I was just like, I'd love to be that lad who, you know, eighteen, nineteen, playing against Sunderland, and you just think, well, I know you've got experience playing against Sunderland. Dan will talk. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, I was just thinking there was one chance that he had. He got played for, I forget who played the pass, and he was just inside the box, and everyone was thinking, cross it in, cross square, it in. Yeah, because, square it, square it, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> and I was thinking, but every lad, every Newcastle lad, there was that half-second moment thinking, if I was him in that position, I would have shot as well. Yeah, well, especially how good he is. Do you know how many goals he probably scored that season for the 23s? You'd be, he'd be that high confidence. He'd, he'd shoot, shoots all the time. That's why he got that many goals this season, because he's always trying to get half yard and shooting. He's got a great shot, so... I knew he was going to shoot, but obviously the fans, <laughs> the fans probably weren't going to square it up. Hundred percent. Look, look at him now, though, as well. Like, in your opinion, Dan, is he Premier League in the waiting? And of 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 Newcastle made his mistake in letting him go and letting him go so cheap. He's definitely Premier League player. You can't be scoring twenty eight goals in the champ and not be playing the Premier League. It's just. You look at Ivan as well. They've scored what they scored them to this yeah. year. Fifty eight goals, something like that. As Ivan scored thirty two, and he scored twenty eight. Unbelievable. So, um, yeah, I think. Well, I don't know how how much to let him go for. To be fair, I don't know. Did have, have they got a sell on or? It's rumored, isn't it, Sam? Yeah, I think they have got a sell on, but wasn't it like three million or something they sold him to Blackburn for? Uh, Peanuts. Well, yeah. If you're looking in that Peanuts, way, it is. But you, but, you, you don't know how, if he goes. He's, he's going to have to go for a, a, a hefty price if he scored that many goals and go in the Premier League. But you never know because the, yeah. the pandemic is as well, the pandemic as well. They're going to be trying to get people in cheaper. Yeah, good point. But for the for the under, for the under 23s, were you, were you playing with Armstrong, Tony? Uh, like the likes of Mbabu um, a few years um, back as well? Because these are the sort of players that we didn't want to see leave. Yeah, well, as a fan, I, I'd, I'd totally agree with you. But, you, you, you know, it, it's it's about money as well and trying to get profit off players. But, um, 
Ivan came in when Armour went on loan. So it was I was playing with Armour when we were about 16, 17, starting to get in the 23s, and he went on loan early. Then Ivan came in and started to play with Ivan. Then I think Kev, Kev came that season as well. And I can remember when he played against Chelsea, he was unbelievable. And then he didn't get a sniff again. So, and then Ivan had a little bit of a, a, a sniff in the Premier League as well. But uh, I don't think he, get, he got his chance much. He had, he had how many good loan spells as well. But um, yeah, I just think he probably wanted to go somewhere and try and score as many goals as he can and get it done that move. Of course. Uh, Dan, let's take it back to you though. And obviously, you talk about your time with the 23s. Who was, in your opinion, the best coach for you when you were going through the ranks and in particular the 23s? Who did you think could improve you better? Um, Pete knew how to get if I, Pete knew how how to get at me really because he knew knew how to get the best out of us. Because if I wasn't have a bad game, he would leave a a little comment to try and get us rallied up or something like that. So he knew how to get the best out of us. I'd say Ben Dawson was a very good coach, one to one coach. Um, and uh, before that, looking at the 18s, I'd say Liam Bramley. Uh, if you, I don't know if you remember him. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Remember the he name? Was, he was at Aston Villa now. He was a great coach. So there's there's been quite a few, even going back to when I was younger. But I think every coach had a different aspect. But I would say probably Pete and Ben, you know, get the best out of it. Ben Dawson in, in particular, Dan, he seems to be a name that obviously he's actually part of the coaching team now. He, he does so well with the 23s. Are you, I'm guessing you weren't surprised that he was promoted into the first as a first team member of staff. Um, well, yes, I know really because you think of how many how many staff the first team have. Do they need any more? Because you've got a first team manager, two assistants, and they've just got Graham Jones in. So that's what I don't know four, but he deserves to be up there. But I think it's it's quite a few coaches, isn't it? I have, but um, yeah, I'd say he deserves it. What's what what's the norm for like on the training nowadays? Because obviously it's 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 only about twelve months since you left Newcastle, and what was what's the kind of norm? Was Steve Bruce the one taking training in pre season, or did he leave that to to Steve Clements and Steve Agnew? Um, well, when we went away to that campus in York, it was um, the fitness guy first getting all the fitness stuff out of the way. And then uh, it would probably be the the two assistants, and then when it when it came towards game day, you would put the tactics and stuff into play. But it was it was a mixture of both, really, both. What was he like as a uh, manager, Steve Bruce, in terms of the tactics side of things? Because everyone obviously will touch about Newcastle in its current days soon, but everybody has that question mark over him. Were you pleasantly surprised by how he went into games? I know it's just pre seasons, obviously some cup games as well, but. What did you think in terms of his actual tactics side of the game? Because when you look at when people obviously make that comparison with Steve Bruce and Rafa Benitez, and they're completely different managers and completely yeah, better yeah. at different things. What did yeah. you make of them? I think Rafa was more in your face, getting tactics like everything done, cones out and stuff like that, and pressing cones and like a different type of tactic. But he was just, he would just say like he. This is the way we want to play, and that's it. And he'll tell you different aspects of where he wants you to press and stuff like that. But it was just that's how we we're going to play, and that was it. So it was quite easy because you just knew what you had to do. Well, and 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 Steve Bruce is he more of a a man manager, a more arm around the shoulder as opposed to the cold hard tactics of Rafa Benitez? Oh yeah, he's definitely he's definitely more. I'd say more. Chatty and that with lads, you know, like having a laugh and stuff like that. And I'd say Rafa's a bit more serious, if I'm being honest. You don't want to get on the wrong side of him sometimes. <laughs> yeah, don't have a bit of banter with him. I was just going to say, because really? I was, was going to say, Rafa obviously gave you a debut, Dan, and obviously the, the FA Cup came against Birmingham. And I was just I was just telling Sam this, because obviously, um, you, 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 if I remember right, I was, at, I was at this game, you kind of just played off the striker, but... You sent the midfield partners with obviously the late Czech Teote and John Joe Shelby, which is like obviously the two yeah. centre midfielders, two very experienced midfielders, obviously, probably probably keeping you in position, probably telling you what to do. What, what were those sort of characters like? Well, John Joe's a character, John Joe's a great, great lad. Um, uh, Teote, 
just you know what he's like so aggressive wasn't he he was just always aggressive yeah. and it was it's great to play in front of that because you know you're probably going to get the ball most of the time because he's going to he's going to get the ball for you but um I try to drop in because I, I like to drop in and try and play a couple of dives, but then John Joe was there sometimes, so I had to sometimes leave it out. And then I, I got in and did a couple of dives. So it wasn't that bad because it was rotating, but I thoroughly enjoyed it that day. I was I was a bit nervous the first 15, 20 minutes, but when I got a couple of passes away, I was I was okay. And thankfully, yeah, we won the game. Were. Yeah, exactly. Played the full 90 as well. And um, just to pick on something you said there, Dan, that uh, you said John Joe Shelby's a great lad. John Joe's one that kind of bears the brunt of fan frustration sometimes because he comes across on the pitch as lazy. He's obviously, he's not on social media, so we don't, as fans, know his character, but we're told from in, inside he's a really popular guy and quite a funny bloke. Um, what What's he like to, to to be around on a on a day-to-day basis? Is he a leader in the dressing room? I would say he is, yeah. I would say he's, he's more of a lead on the pitch, if you know what I mean. Before games, he's, he's not as talkative, but on the pitch, he's, he's very talkative. Um, and like you said, eh, he's, he's a great lad. He's got good crack. Um, doesn't really get into many arguments. And uh, he's, he's a very good player. But I, and well, the fans are the fans are saying he's lazy, but it's, it's hard because I'm quite similar. Because if you're playing a, a, a sitting midfielder, everyone thinks, oh, you're not moving. And then you look at your stats after, and you've done like 11, 11 kilometers. So people <laughs> people think you haven't moved, but moving constantly side to side and forward and back, maybe 20, 30 yards to get the ball, it, it tallies up, you know. So oh, I can imagine. I know, <laughs> so it, it is it is quite hard, but and he's quite he's quite fit as well. Every well last preseason when I came in, he was he was looking quite fit. So yeah, but you know, fans gonna... fan, fans love to have a rant. Don't they? We've got to have a rant somewhere. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's part of football. It's part of football, yeah. Dan. But, but just going back on that FA Cup game, um, when did you know that you were going to start that game? And did you, could you could you sleep the night before, or was it on the day? And what were your overriding memories of the whole occasion? It was the day before we were in shape, um, and obviously when Rafa was there, he would do set, um, set pieces with the people who were starting. Obviously, he called my name over. And I can remember. Um, it was, it was me and Jack Colback saying, oh, you, you better put your heart on your sleeve and all this for corners and all that. Getting in was a bit... Um, but I think when I, was, when I got home, told me dad, and that was a bit mixed emotions because it was a bit sad, you know, everyone's buzzing. And then the day of the game actually wasn't too bad until I got to the stadium. I said, oh, I'm about 30 minutes away here. And then I, it was quite... I think it was about 30,000. So it was my first probably proper time playing over 10,000 because it was a Youth Cup game the biggest crowd I played in and uh, I can remember walking it was the first time I'd walked out in that um, the east eye the east stand when you walk out was totally falling like wow and then uh, like I said the first 15 minutes of edge and then I got into the game so it was okay I did all right but yeah it was unbelievable day oh, and it was my birthday happy. sorry it was my birthday it was my 20th birthday yeah I forgot about that <laughs> oh, Richie could have let you t- took the penalty. Yeah, I know, I know, and it was it was probably the it was the last time your grand actually the first and last time your grand I seen us play for Newcastle. So that was a thinking back now it was it was a great memory to have. Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, I, I can imagine that day was a hell of a lot better than the Oxford one, but. Um, were you, were you a bit a bit a bit disappointed that you weren't in and around the first team more towards the back end of that championship season, or, or did did Raf explain sort of his plan that he had for you? Well, no, I think it was even before that. Well, looking back now, there was a couple of regrets I would say I would have. I would say I think I should have went on loan when I was eighteen. I had a chance to go up Scotland um, to Hibs, and then I remember the Oxford game. After the Oxford game, I could have went to Oxford on loan, and that would have been a, a year before when I made proper loan. So I could have had two loans before I was twenty, and I think that that puts in good stead all the loans. Because if I didn't have good good loans at Rotherham and Accrington, I might not have had a club after um, after Newcastle. So it's quite good because if you do good at a club on loan, you've got it's backup really, isn't it? So you can go and sign for them if you get released or get let go. But um, 
Yeah, I forgot, I forgot what the question was now. <laughs> yeah, did, 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 did Rafa have a plan for you to, to, oh, um, to kind of bring you into the first team eventually? Uh, not really. Uh, well, well, I didn't get old anything, to be fair, so... Um, really? Not really, because that, that pre-season... Uh, I, didn't, I didn't go away that pre-season. The pre-season just gone is the first pre-season I went away with the first team. Wow. Really? Yeah, because... Well, the other time I had been told to go on loan, and then people had been people twenty threes would go up. So, but um, yeah, it was the first time this one I'd been. But um, it wasn't really a problem because I had two good loan spells that other pre scenes I went on on loan, so it wasn't really a problem. But yeah, he didn't really have a plan. But he gave us my debut, and he gave us what did he give us two two more games. He gave us so I'm uh, grateful for that. Yeah, exactly. You can't take that. You can't take that away. Like I say, I think every Newcastle fan who hasn't played at St James is like properly is absolutely jealous of that fact. And the fact that you managed to do it on a few occasions, Dan, is absolutely brilliant. But when you look, you talk about your loan spells, and it was your first loan spell was at Crew, and you only played a handful of games. But did you feel yeah. probably you, you learned more just in that short period? Going into your future loans at say Accrington and Accrington Stanley and, and now at, obviously at Rotherham now, but did you learn more at Crew just for that first few weeks? Was he playing? Some people call it men's football, essentially. Yeah, well, obviously tw- when you play twenty threes, that well, winning doesn't really matter, does it? Because you're not really yeah. playing for anything. You, you, if you you don't if you if you come bottom of the league, you're not going to get wages deducted and all that sort of stuff. You're going to remember going to Crew. Because it was late in the window I went because I had some better options earlier on and they didn't let us go until late. And I remember I had two days to go and the only option I had at that time was crew. So that was one, another one regrets. I should have went earlier, but but went, went crew. Um, and then you go in, they were, they were in a bit of a relegation battle and the first game was against Wickham and I, I came on. I remember I had a mark from Fenron on a corner. I was like, what, what is going on here? <laughs> I was I was so skinny then as well. Oh, um, but then, but then even in training and stuff, you would I was backing myself and I was even saying to myself, I'm one of the best midfielders. Yeah, and he's he just the, the manager at the time just put experience in. And you you can't really argue with that because he's. I remember the lad. Uh, what was his name? He played about 400, 500 games in League Two, in Championship and stuff like that. So you can't really complain about that. But like you said, I, I learned a lot. And uh, I just, I just sent myself when I came back. I don't want to be playing in League Two again. And <laughs> thankfully, up until now, I haven't, haven't done that. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a great learning curve. I remember. I bet it was, but I remember at the time when you went and that it was announced that you were going to Crew on loan. I, I thought that's a fantastic move, despite yeah. it le- being League Two. But Crew have got such a history and a pedigree of de- developing young players, and I found yeah. it so frustrating got you must have been ridiculously frustrated because i was frustrated not yeah. seeing you make many appearances and, and, and the loan was cut short i mean did you not go into was it artel was the manager then or was it who was the who was the yeah, manager it was artel. Uh, well sterry i remember sterry was there as well when he jamie sterry was there um, yeah and like you said um Looking back, it's th- I think it's youngsters coming from crew because I remember my granddad saying was when I signed, he was like, you do know he didn't even play Harry Wilson when he went on loan there. He, he was saying like the last, last 11 loan players who'd went to crew hardly played. And I was I remember thinking then that the first time I was unused sub, then again, I was like, oh, yeah, we'll go then. I'm not going to be playing here. But uh, I just I just trained hard and it was just it was just one of them going in to speak the gaffer told him my views and he just said oh, I'm not. he thought I was at, at the end of me spell he thought I was a winner and I was like what is going on here he thought I was a winner but um yeah I just said I, I remember in the, uh, the 23s we were we were still in the what was it the, is it like the Champions League of the 20s I don't know what it was it was like a European yeah. tournament and I came back and played against Porto and had a couple of decent games with 23s and then um got me low and moved to Akron and then just kicked on from there, really. But it was very yeah. frustrating. But like I said before, it was, a, it was a learning curve. And you talk about your move to Accrington. Obviously, everyone, when you hear the name Accrington Stanley, it's like obviously a, a small family community club. But yeah, you absolutely flourished there, Dan. You really did. And we have to mention the game against Sunderland at the Stadium of Light. And obviously, as a, as a Newcastle fan, 
who, you know, would have seen obviously the, the rivalry and then obviously you get to play against Sunderland in a league match and it, and it was on Sky, I think, if I, if I remember rightly as well. So yeah. it was on the telly, obviously the biggest club in League One against arguably the smallest club in League One, obviously the tail of the tape kind of scenario, but it definitely held your own. And did you end up with a draw that game? Was it 2-2, I believe? Yeah, I can remember, um, well, I remember my first one, Akron was brilliant. Obviously there's, there's quite a lot of scousers there. So you know what scousers are like, yeah. Always talk them and chatty and stuff like that. And I remember first I was like, wow. But uh, I was really impressed with the football they played. I didn't think they were going to play that much football. And uh, I, was, I played my first game against Wimbledon or what it was. And then I, I went on to play like 45 games or something. And um, But that was a similar situation because it went up the, the season before and he didn't change the team for like 80 something games. But I got in straight away and then just didn't stop from there. But the Sunderland game, I can remember very well all my family was in a way and my friends and stuff like that and we went 2-0 up um, and it was about 60 minutes I remember they brought Aidan McGeady on and our right back was knackered bless him knackered <laughs> and uh, they, they, they ended up they ended up scoring two late on but uh, getting a point there it was, it was a great point but we comfortably stayed up that season we were start the season unbelievable I think we were third after about 12 13 games and um, but it was it was it was very very good, and the football was great, and the people were great. Obviously, um, we'll we'll talk a bit more about Rotherham later on. Obviously, it's really disappointing how the season ended. But did you have one eye on the League One playoffs and seeing Sunderland muck it up again, <laughs> and just think, oh, I'm, I'm actually quite looking forward to getting stuck into them now next season. Oh yeah. Well, have you seen it? Well, looking at League One next year, there's some massive teams in it now. Obviously, Sheffield Wednesday are there. Portsmouth are still there. Ipswich are a massive club. Um, trying to think who else went down with us. Wickham will have a go. There's like seven or eight teams who'll be thinking they're going to get promoted. So it's going to be a a very very good season. And even the teams in the bottom half, they're not easy to go and win against. So it's going to be very very exciting. I was going to say because. Um... It's funny because everyone says, oh, it's, it's the championship's the toughest division to get out of. But when you mention all those teams in League One, and like you, at least three or four of those teams aren't going to be promoted. And yeah, Rotherham are always in, in, in yeah. there or thereabouts. Or, Rotherham have always been there or thereabouts. They've kind of been like a little bit of a, a yo yo the last couple of years in terms of championship and League One. But they've never been like lower than fifth or sixth, really, in League One, which is just a, a credit to them. But at Accrington, obviously, you got the game time, you came back. And obviously, you were told you, you, you were going back on loan, but was there other options than Rotherham the first time round? Yes, um, there was Wigan, uh, there was a couple of championship clubs, um, there was a couple of Turkish clubs, but I was never going to go to Turkey. <laughs> Why not? You'd have been playing in the Euros if you did. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you never know. Yeah, might have, but... Um, <laughs> But it was looking at, I think, would you, would you want to go to a championship club that's probably fighting maybe relegation or just to stay up or go to a, a League One club that's nailed on to win the league or go up? And I was thinking, well, a bit of both really because you're probably going to play more games in League One with a very good team and then championship if it's a team that's struggling, you might be in and out of the team. So I, I'd probably say it was a good decision really because played a lot of games, another 40 games I think it was, well sorry, 30 something games until I got scrapped because of COVID, but um, we didn't start the season that well that year, um, well we were about 7th, and then I remember we had a Christmas deal in London, uh, every, all the lads on the lash, and then we came back and went like 21 games or something like that unbeaten, and we were, that's what we, we said that we said that hey. this, we didn't have a, we didn't have a Christmas do this year. That's probably why we went down. <laughs> you can have all the sports science in the world. You can have all the first team coaches in the world. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Go on the lash at Christmas. That's all you need yeah. to do. Recipe for yeah. success. <laughs> but um, Dan, when you went to Rotherham first time round, was that when you signed a new contract at Newcastle before you went out on the loan? So. Did you, there was still sort uh, of like uh, a plan in no, place no, to, think, uh, to keep. I had, had a had a. I think it was when I went Akron. Was it Akron? I don't know. I think I had a year, a year left on me deal with the year option then. So I still be well. I had two years left basically if they kept the option. So I, 
I didn't get off a new deal, but it was. I got the two years anyway. So, but it was, I think they said it was a new deal, but it wasn't really because it was already in my contract. So interesting. Yeah, because that's the thing with with contract for season. Newcastle are really coy about it and don't release anything because it was kind of rumoured that you had signed a new deal and then gone to to Rotherham on loan. And then yeah. a kind of similar thing happened before you then got sold, but you never had a new contract at any point in your time. Um, I think it wasn't even a new, I don't even know if it was a new contract, you know, I'm getting confused now. I think it was just the, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if, the deal wasn't up. I think it was just like a year on a bit more money with the year option. Right. If you know what I mean. I think it might be a mm. So well, it, it's a it's a new ideal, but the same length. Yeah. What's what's your relationship like with Paul Warren? Because he seems a character. Like, you watch him on the touchline, and you just think he kicks every ball, he heads every ball, and oh yeah, you know, he really wants to get really wants to get involved. It, was he the reason that you actually signed for Rotherham first and second time? Was he was he the the big the big reason or the, the big I don't know overwhel- overwhelming factor? Well, yeah. Well, I can remember. Um, Shaw was saying they, they, um, him and his assistant Matt Hamshaw actually came to Newcastle to show Shaw like a presentation of how they want me to play in Rotherham's team. And uh, then they showed me, and I was like, well, no one else has done that for me ever. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm up for that. And then just a top bloke, really. And he was just saying like, he, when he tries to get people in the club, he wants, he wants good people, he doesn't want anyone who's big time and stuff like that. Um, and he's just he was just a great man, great man manager as well. And uh and that's probably why I went back the second time. And knowing that I would play games as well. That's a, that's another big thing you need to know that you you're gonna play at least what sixty, seventy percent of the season and try and put yourself out there. And uh, that was another reason. But yeah, he's he's a he's a great guy. That just shows as well just how much they wanted you and, and if they're coming up and like you say, putting that presentation together, how how does that work with the club then? Does does Shola come to you and say such and such has been in, they want you on loan, or is it a case of um, it's a bit, it's a bit of both. The manager? Yeah, it's a bit of both. Um, the agent will probably see these clubs, and then I don't know, I don't know if Shola's still working as a loan manager. Um, but he was. Yeah, he is. I think. I went, is he still? Yeah, he was very good with me. Be fair, Shola. Um, I think before. Before he came in, it was actually a bit of a bit of a shambles. Really, no one really talked to you when he went on loan. It was just, just go on loan. No one would say how you were doing and stuff like that. It would have to be the agent and, and uh, talking to the club. But when Shola came, he would always come up and see every say forty-eight weeks with me and sit down and how he how he thinks you're doing and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so he he'll get the clubs that want you, and then you could probably choose there with the agent and stuff like that. I think that's so wrong that the fact that no, like before Shola came in that no one really kind of said to you like we're, we're damn actually quite impressed with how you've been playing for the last few weeks keep it going you know everybody's um, keeping an eye on you and the fact there was no communication you almost kind of just need that though Dan don't you just to kick up the backside just to say yeah. well are you playing any better are you, are you, can you do any anything better in, than League 1 or League 2 what what can you bring to yeah, the table? Um, well, I remember the Akron season like um it was like two or three times that season I was up for player of the month and nobody had spoke to us. I think it was the last game of the season. Someone, no, one of the last home games of the season, someone from Newcastle come to watch us. And I remember I was absolutely knackered then. We were playing Luton, we were top of the league. We had a man sent off after 10, uh, yeah. 10 minutes. So we were playing with 10 men. I was knackered. I didn't really have a good game. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was a, one of the first times. But um when Shola came in, it was much different. I think you need that, really. You just need a bit of support. That's just someone to call or someone to call you and tell you, well, I don't think you've had a good game. No, I think you've had a good game. So it's good that they've got in place now. But uh, like you said, it should have been done it is. earlier. Yeah, because if you think, like you say, you're in flying form for Accrington, if, if, if we had someone in play sooner, as you say, they could have been reporting back to the manager and go right. Stick Barlazer in pre-season with the first team, and and things. Yeah, th- there would have been that path of progression there, wouldn't there? But um, what was season like? Um, well, last season now, I suppose, wasn't it? 
because there was the whole dilemma of we've only got a couple of squad spaces. We were in the frame to fill. Hendrick, Matty had his contract situation as well. We, how, where were you of situation and and did was there conversations with the manager how he's going to decide who goes in the squad and and who's going to go where? Um. Well, I, that remember I told you that was my first pre-season, but I was disappointed I didn't go the one after me Akron loan after that season. Um, but I was delighted to go this time because I could try and show myself I've arguably been one of the best midfielders in League One for two seasons. So I'm thinking I'll give us a right crack now. Um, and um, it was I think I don't know what, what game was it the store game I think I had a good game. Um, and I, I even think I even think then I had a chance because. I think when you had Jeff and uh, Jeff and someone else come in, I think it was when um, was it Ryan Fraser and Callum Wilson came in. Yeah, it was. That was it. It, it must that have been was, difficult though, because you you probably, you, yeah. you're competing with them though, aren't you? And then new signings. Yeah, but well, well, Callum Wilson and them too. They played Premier League for how many years and done very well. So you can't really compete with that, can you? Because it's it's they played hundreds of games in the Premier League and you've only played a hundred games in League One so it's it's um, it's it's a whole one but you've got to take it really because I thought I had a, a very good pre-season and I did alright against I think it was Blackburn we played Blackburn and then obviously the Morecambe game I came on for about 20 minutes and it was about 7-0 up I think it won <laughs> so you can't yeah. really show yourself that much but um, yeah and then just you just had the chat saying I wasn't going to be in the squad and um and then he said I could go, and I could, I could, I could really, I could have been a, a bit of a, I don't want to swear, I could have been a bit of a. Do whatever, say whatever you want. Say whatever you want. Yeah, I could have been a bit of a twat and just said, right, okay, well, I'm not leaving because <laughs> I was on, I was on a, I was on a decent wage. And I could have just stayed and played at the twenty threes for a year, done something like that. But um, I just thought, well, I'm just going to go somewhere that I'm wanted in Rotherham playing the championship show myself so I just say well I'd, I'll just do it then Do you prefer that sort of honest chat from like obviously from Steve who's to say look Dan you're not in the squad um, you know we, we want you to, we want you to kind of develop and you know we, they're probably let's be honest they're probably thinking of getting some funds and they've probably made that yeah. difficult difficult decision is it tough to take but do you at least appreciate the honesty because it, you know yeah. sometimes some players just don't get told anything do they Yeah um Steve Bruce, yes, and it's the same with Paul Warren. It's like if you've had a bad game, you're not starting the next game. I'd rather you tell us straight up than saying, "Oh, you're not, you've done very well, but I'm not playing you. You've done, you've done very well, but you're not going to be in the squad." You just said, "Oh, you're not going to be in the squad," and I was just like, oh, "That's fair enough." This is how football works. Sometimes you you, do, you don't get what you want. Sometimes, but you just have to move on as quick as you can, really. And I did it within a month. I think I was gone. So. um it was very sad leaving after that much time, thinking I, I could have given more or if I got given a chance in the Premier League, but hopefully I can work my way back up. Kind of like what Ivan's done, try and work my way back up and then get in the Premier League team one day. Is, is that the, the the big obvious aim then? Because obviously we've mentioned Ivan Tony, Adam Armstrong. Ivan Tony's back in the Premier Well, he's going to be in the next season. Um, if, if if that's the case, do you think so, like a move like that for for a Matty Longstaff on loan or or even or even both? Do you think that would benefit them in the long run as well? And how much did you kind of talk with the rest of the lads who were kind of in contention for for that last squad space? Um, it's a hard one, Matty, because Matty did unbelievable when he came in, didn't he? I think Matty's a great yeah. player. Um, yeah. I just think he had a couple of ups and downs with injuries at certain times where he probably would have played and he had been injured. Um, and the squad places, I can remember Murphy, Jake and Murphy came back and he was unbelievable pre-season. And he definitely deserved his spot. And I think he's, I think he's done very well this season. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, there was Christian Atsu as well, like who was an experienced player. And he was obviously he didn't get in the twenty-five, and that's yeah. the sort of caliber, really, isn't it? 
Yeah, well, obviously, if you look how many games he's played in the Premier League and the Championship, he's had a great career. Um, it's just that thing when a new signing comes in and he's probably had a better season than you, it's hard to get ahead of him. Really, you only have about four weeks to show what you can do in a couple of pre-season games. And uh, it's like I said, you've got a bit of luck sometimes. But, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be uh, good to see where he goes this summer. Because he's out of contact, obviously. Who else did not? Yeah, and, and, and of course Henry Saive is out of uh, out of out of contract as well. <laughs> he 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 was what you could have done, Dan, and he did stick around. Um, did you ever have it? And this is a really random question. I've he's, only just he's thought. A lovely, he's a lovely bloke, you know. A lovely bloke. Is he? Yeah, yeah. It's so sound. Even when he was in the twenty threes, like you did try, like you had some like certain first teamers who had to play for the twenty threes, but he always tried. He was. Honestly, I didn't even think he was that bad, you know, in training. I actually thought he was good in training. Yeah. Like people are giving it the perception that he was a very bad player and all this, but he didn't really get a chance. I thought he was a good player, in my opinion, training with him and stuff like that. Well Justice for Tyve. I was Justice for I was at his I think it was one of the, one of his only few games. I think it might have been his first game, it was Everton away. It was a cool Tuesday, Wednesday night. I had a, I think I was, I was at uni at this point, so it wasn't too far away. And I remember he got taken off after an hour by McLaren. I thought, well, I can and kind I of understand the then. Yeah, I can kind I of understand the taking somebody off for an attacking player, but it wasn't that bad. It seemed worse. Yeah. Well, that was, I remember that was the only chance, really, I got. I had so close to being in the Premier League when I was on the bench against um, West Brom when I was sub right back and Yam Nats went down. I was like, oh, my God. I thought it was a goal warm up. I was thinking, oh... Then even if you look back at stuff like that, if I got on, if I got on, it, it could have been different. But uh, well, that was with McLaren. Yeah. McLaren, yeah. What was he McLaren, like yeah. as a manager? I think he was a good coach. To be fair, same again. He was he's very good with good with the lads. He was always laughing and joking stuff like that. But when he got to football and stuff, it was serious. And obviously, it was he didn't have a obviously the the results didn't go his way. But um, it's hard to get results in the Premier League, especially at Newcastle. <laughs> when you say it like that. When you're Castle fans. Yeah. I know, but McLaren <laughs> did have quite, he, he did have quite a good squad, a lot better than what like we had after I mean look at that mid I mean that midfield well, McLaren had Wynaldo and Sissoko. They were in the Champions League final against each other not so long back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, what was that start when Wijnaldum scored 12 at home but didn't score any away? Yeah. Was that yeah. a start? Yeah. Yeah, I can remember that start. But you can't say anything about that now, though. He's won the Champions League and he's probably... You heard he's going to Barcelona or something like that. He's gone PSG he's in the end. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. He's went to PSG. And God knows what money. <laughs> Is he one of, the, one of the top players? Did you see him on the training ground much? Did you have many sessions with Wijnaldum? Was he one of like the best you've seen at Newcastle? Um, I did have quite a few. I remember I went to the, I went to the La Manga trip actually, and um, he was. Uh, I just thought he used his body so well. Like, it was very hard to get the ball off him. He used his body so well. And obviously, he, he's very good at heading for the size. Or he, he's very good at heading, but uh, he wasn't the best I've trained. With. The best I've trained with um, Ben Arthur. Uh, he know. was brilliant. Brilliant. He was he, absolutely. Even the twenty threes. I remember. Because I think he came back a bit overweight and he got sent down and he played a couple of games with us. He was frightening. Unbelievable. Really? Yeah. Best I've, well, best I've trained with and played with, or technically played with, he played a 23s game with us. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there was rumours like he was a bit of a, a difficult character, but I, I think like Newcastle fans, we we like that kind of bit of a nutter, don't we? What, was he a bit of a nutter or was, he, was it just blown out of proportion? You don't want nice, nice, nice guys, do you? Or innocent, nice guys who are just going to be soft on the pitch, do you? You don't want that. You, you kind of want an aggressive, you know, more yeah. nutter, if you're saying, because they'll, they'll, they'll give everything, they'll put everything there, but, you know, it's about opinions, isn't it, really? Every, it's what football is about, it's about opinions, but, yeah, <laughs> you'd, want, you'd rather have nutters than people who aren't nutters. Yeah, 100%. People really that are dedicated, isn't it? But, um, yeah. Obviously, when you look at Newcastle now, and we'll touch about your uh, 
where you are with Rotherham now and going into the next season, but at the end. But when you look at Newcastle now, 12th place finish under Steve Bruce, and you know, a lot of the season it was are Newcastle going to stay up, are Newcastle going to go down, um, are the players playing for the manager. From what you saw, probably obviously when Rotherham aren't playing, when you, when you watched Newcastle, what did you make of the season overall? Well, I'll agree with you there because I think there was one stage you think, well, there's the win and relegation battle now. And then we went on a couple of games where we did quite well. It, it always seems to be the case, doesn't it, though? We'll have like a spell of losing a couple of games and then when it comes to the well, the, the big bit of the season where you have to get results, we'll always get results. So I just don't understand. It's not even with Bruce. Sometimes it was with Rafa and the previous managers where we go through a spell of losing all the games. Why can we not just be like we'll play at the end of the season for the full season? <laughs> <laughs> like if you look at West Ham, once you get on that run early on at the start of the season, you can just kick on from there. But um, I think finishing twelfth, you've done well considering where we were Christmas time. But it was disappointing the the cup because that was a massive chance in the cup. I remember watching that game. And uh, you could see the mile off the first half, but we we're going to get beat. Did you get sent? Someone got sent off that game. Was it the first half? Did someone from Newcastle get sent off? Uh, was it Fraser? Was that in the first half? Was it, Fraser or or was it Fraser or Hendrick that got sent off? But after that, but, yeah. but either way, it was a terrible night. <laughs> <laughs> because in some games I've watched them think we've played unbelievable football. And then the next week, it's just no football at all. So, at the Everton away game, it's the best I've seen Newcastle that season. It was so good. I agree. On the ball and stuff like that. And then, like, you look at the Brentford game, like, hardly pass the ball with each other. And, like, the way yeah. Brentford played, Brentford just pop, popped it around with him there. Did, like, during that time when, like, the Brentford game and then going to Sheffield United, playing five at the back and looking horrendous there, did, did you look back and think, oh, Bit of regret, should have maybe stayed and fought for me place a bit more, or or were you like, Oh, I'm glad I've got out of that and I'm playing first team football week in, week out? It's a bit of both, really, because I was going through a good spell at that time with Rodham. I would won a couple of games and I was playing every game uh, in the championship, which is a very good level. Um, but then sometimes you think, If I if you if you think, Oh, I stayed and then we've just been in the same position in January. So it's it's a hard one. If you look back in hindsight, you'd say oh, I'd probably stay and maybe got a chance, but I don't regret anything. I don't blame you. I don't blame you, especially with the way it's ended up for you as well, Dan. But a couple of quick questions on Rotherham. Um, I think the one thing I'd like to know, because obviously you've, you've played championship football week in, week out now, and who did you find is the toughest opposition player? So someone in your position, like say Norwich, Brentford, and um, Brent, yeah. I think it, Brent, Brent, yeah, by a by a country mile, Brandy. Wow. Unbelievable. I remember, do you know what the worrying, uh, the two games we played Norwich, that was a problem with our season. We, we, we didn't get battered by anyone. We only got beat by one goal. The home game, we went 1 0 up and missed a penalty. And then we had a man sent off and we got beat 2 1. And then the away game, we were 1 0 down and we've missed two absolute sit downs towards the end. So there's, that's a story of our season, but Brandy. He was so sharp on the ball. His touch was unbelievable. His passing was unbelievable. And he's just saying, how was it record deal Aston Villa? Yeah, 30, 35 mil or something like that. Yeah. Is he worth yeah, so that, you look think? At, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he is. But they're having a right go on Aston Villa. Having a right go. Um, but yeah, him yeah. and... Um, I like that De Silva from Brentford. And obviously, you go, you look at Arma and Ivan, you've got to say them, but I didn't really play against them. Yeah. Um, who else? Who else? Um, Buendia or Saint Maximin? Who's better? Are you going off stats? Are you going off stats? Are you going off stats? got better stats. That's what people look yeah. at now, man. Stats. I'm joking, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, he's he's the same age as, as me. I can remember he's he's he can't get the ball. He's so quick. That's the thing with Brendan. He's not as quick as Saint Maximum. Saint Maximum. 
wow does. If he gets on a run and he's off, that's it. I think that's the only thing I would say he could get a bit better with it, passing off a bit earlier sometimes. But other than that, I think he's... We need to keep a hold of him. Yeah, 100%. Because yeah, that's 100%. the thing. There's, there's improvement to be had out of him, which is quite a scary thought. Yeah. yeah well, he's still young. And, exactly. uh, yeah, just just not, not even that much as well, by the way. Just a little bit, a little bit I would say. Yeah. And he could be... He could be up there at the top. Hundred um, percent. Obviously, it ended up in relegation for Rotherham last season, and I actually thought you were very unlucky, Dan, because I think it's at one point. I think like towards the back end of the season, obviously there was a couple of COVID issues, and I think it ended up having yeah. like four games in hand on the other teams. Yeah. And I think I think one week, I'm sure I've seen Rotherham play like four times in one week. I think you played yeah. something like either Saturday or Sunday, then Tuesday, then Thursday, then Saturday or yeah. Sunday, and you yeah. just think, well, hold on, like. I know they want to finish this. Yeah. It's massively unfair because you try to finish the season, and I, I understand that the, the EFL want to finish the season on the same day. Mm-hmm. But surely common sense must come into play yeah. at some point because in a difficult season like that was last year, you know, if you had a, even a couple of more days rest, you know, you might be, not concede in, in the last minute against Cardiff. Yeah. yeah um, well, we off last season. I remember our sports science was saying we were third in Europe rather than for total distance as as running. So we're running quite a lot. That's what the, the gaffer the gaffer's ethos is. Try and be fitter than every other team. And up until that point I would say probably we were we were dominating more teams and then the last twenty minutes we were, were kicking on. But I remember we had I had played that two games that week. So we played Sunday, Tuesday, we, we drew one, one one. And then I remember we played Thursday and I was gone. I had to come off half time, I think. It was half time. And then I remember one of the lads, I think he played all four. So it was Sunday, Tuesday, Friday or Thursday, then Sunday. So it was like four games in a week or just over a week. And then bear in mind after that, it's just back into Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday until the end of the season. But um, you can you can say it's unfair, but other teams are just saying, oh, we, we should just lose three points and they should get three points. But... It's a it's a mixture of everything because there's so many chances over this season. I've thought I've I've looked back. We should be in scoring more. Like if you look at some of the opportunities we had, in even the last six games, we should have been even the Cardiff games should be now of sight in the first half. So I think that was the story of the season. We did well in games and we didn't score enough in the vital times. That's the thing, like you say as well. You never got battered by anyone, even by the yeah. even by the top teams and. With the fixture congestions, I'd, you you must believe that you weren't really one of the three worst teams in that division that no. season. No. Well, even if you look at Barnsley, like we played Barnsley. Did you watch the Barnsley Swansea game? Oh yeah, I, I did. I watched the Barnsley Swansea game, but I, I, can I just add? Was it, did you? Was it Barnsley versus Rotherham? Where I think it was like the first minute or something. You keep against yeah, I was, yeah, did, did he, yeah, and give the goal. I couldn't. I, was, give, I think that was one goal. of the worst decisions I've said. Uh, yeah, yeah, they give the goal. See, that's what I'm saying. That's the point that could have kept up. They give the goal. There was another one we played Middlesbrough at home. We one nil up, and I'm telling you now, if we had 11 men, we would have went on to beat them two or three. And at me, the lad who's playing centre mid with me, Matt Crux, he's up six foot four. He went ahead the ball, and the kids headed it, and he's just headed his head, like headed his head, and he, the referee sent him off. And we ended up getting beat, and then there was uh, there's just been a couple of decisions this season. You think, that, well, that's majorly wrong, but you know, we don't have VAR. <laughs> well, we that, that's, VAR. that's the thing. That's the point I was I was going to come on to when when you say things like that because I always remember Rafa tearing his, his hair out, and and that Matt, uh, remember the penalty decision against Burton for us. Um, was that, it? That, is this home our way? Home it was a turn where it was scored, yeah. Yeah. Scored and then he he give a free kick instead of a retake. <laughs> the standard of refereeing in the championship is very, very hit and miss. Like, yeah. do you think they yeah. need VAR in the championship? Because it's like a big money spinning league as well. It's still one of the biggest yeah. leagues in Europe. And it's just, yeah, it's, like it's still in the top there. eight or something, isn't it? It's still in the top ten, yeah. I think, or maybe a bit inside that. Well, if you want decisions to go like bang on correct every time, I would say yes, but like you said, some of, I remember the, the Barnes one with the keeper. I remember with, with Gaffer got the fourth and went and showed at the fourth and fish. He was just saying, I'm sorry. He's literally elbowed him in the face and he's given the goal. And even some of the offsides they give 
Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You, like you'll be miles on to be given offside. I think it's just when people go like that, you know, put the hand and the other center yeah. off and they just they'll just flag. They'll just flag. <laughs> but um, yeah. it's a hard one. You, they've got a hard job with their referees, especially when everyone's yeah. in the face and stuff like that. But I think it would help. Well, it's helped the, the Premier League, hasn't it? But well, they're giving off. Well, they're giving off sides like that now, aren't they? Yeah. So. Yeah, well, well they're, gonna gonna use, millimeters. they're gonna use thicker lines for next season. Apparently. <laughs> no, I've That's seen that, much. but they should, the striker should still have a, have a tiny advantage. I still think. Yeah, you exactly. Exactly, got to be because you, that's what people want to see. They want to see goals. But if Newcastle are in a situation where you know a size seven foot of the defender, and we've yeah. got a size eight striker, like size eight foot striker, like yeah. it's that of the margins, and you just think you just. I, I, well, some of the decisions I've seen this season where, like, uh, was it Watkins when his arm was, it was yeah. just his arm offside. Yeah. I'm thinking, you can't use your arm this way anyway, so how can you... <laughs> <laughs> it's just mental, isn't it? It's mental. Yeah. Um, last question for you, Dan. Uh, we've taken so much time and you've been very, very good, very good value. What is the... You didn't ask Lynch, he's got nothing else to do. I, know. <laughs> I can go for another now, mate, don't worry. I've got <laughs> What is the future for you, Dan? Because obviously you're still at Rotherham. Um, I think you've still got a couple, a couple of years at least at Rotherham. Is, is that where you want to see your football or are you open to a move at the Championship? What, what, what would you like to do if it was up to you? Oh, um, well, I would love to get back Rotherham back in the Championship. That's the first thing. But uh, like you said, everything, um, with having a, I've got a mortgage now and stuff like that, so you need to... Think about what money you're going to be on. If someone comes and has money, more money, or a, a better league, you've got to you've got to think about it, haven't you? Really, but um, I, I would I would be happy staying at Rotherham. That's that's what I was saying. But if a championship club did come in, you've got to consider it, haven't you? Because of course you do. Yeah, but, but but like you say, like you got a mortgage now. So if if that championship club's on like the south coast or whatever, it's a big deal to move. Like this is like the side of football that us fans don't really see. Like you you kind of got to think about like where well, to. If, like, well, sorry, it's, it's di- well you, with Premier League players, you can forget about mortgages. You don't even have to look in the bank yeah. for mortgages. <laughs> they could go and buy a house outright, and even like top end championship clubs, you know, like the Premier League clubs that have came down or. Because even some people are still on 30, 40 grand a week in the championship, on the even more. Wow. Even wow. more. Um, but once you start going to League One, League Two, um, you have to consider because certain people are on, on money that other people are, but um, you've got to think about more with your life, your family, and stuff like that. So you've got to make ends meet sometimes. If you're in the Premier League, you don't even have to look there. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. Dan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the Green and Mullins show. If all you can do the next season is do the double over Sunderland, I think that'll be a job well done. And if you can get promotion at the end of it, I think that'll be the cherry on top of the cake. Yeah, oh, well, that, I was good that the season stopped last time because we had Sunderland on the last game of the season. I was in <laughs> Robin League one. and they, if Because we were top of the league at the time, so if we were top of the league, they would have to do it. What is it? The... When they have to line up and clap you out. Oh, God, oh, God of Honor. <laughs> yeah, so they, they, would have, they would have done that for me in all the last. Oh. Thing they did. So that's why I was gutted because I missed out on that because we, we came, we were, we were top at the time. So, but yeah, if we can do the double over them and they give oh, a lap of, uh, lap of honor, it would be unbelievable. You would have had to have wore a Newcastle shirt under you. I've considered it. I've considered before, you know, having someone under me top, like up, up the millers, up the mags, something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> or, or like um, the Lincoln striker did in the playoffs, just wheel away the after he scored doing the Shearer. Yeah. But the, there's, uh, I, I didn't tell you this. So the Sunderland away game, Farquharton, when we scored the second goal, I remember I was doing this to my fans and two of me mates who are Sunderland fans are literally sitting, not even lying in this corner. Two of us abuse swearing at us. I was just pointing at them, laughing at them. It was unbelievable. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's oh. absolutely mint. Uh, Sam, where can everybody get this podcast? Uh, it is available on all podcast outlets. Subscribe, rate five stars. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then the links to the other shows are in the description. Dan, thank you so much for your time. It's been absolutely brilliant. Been good. I'll see you later.
Cheers, Fantastic. Dan. From myself, Jonathan Greer and Sam Mulner, I'm the Rotherham United midfielder, Dan Barlazer. We'll see you all very, very soon.